Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and um, I had somebody ask, could you make some little tea packet holders, some fun ways we could use them. The holidays are coming up. A lot of us might be thinking about fun uh, ways we want to add tea bags into our junk journals for gifting or happy mail or standalone little pockets or whatever have you. But here are some fun things to explore. But first of all, a word from our sponsor. Yes, hello everybody. I discovered thunder today. It was not good. No, I didn't like it at all. It was very big and booming. Mom tried to sell me on some sort of the Thunder Gods are bowling story, but I didn't buy it. Not for a second. I'm going back to sleep now. Yes, bye. Okay. Thank you very much for that commentary, son. Back in your little uh, place and let's take a look at the prototypes. Okay, so these are all very easy to make. You could sew or no, uh, no sew either, either of these very easily, um, but I'll show you a couple options. Okay, so this little guy looks like this. He has three little pockets and uh, an applique, some stenciling on the back, some stamping. I was just having fun, just playing and a little bit of sewing. Um, and then on the back, I put, uh, oh, okay, could come down to you. Uh, index, I just tore an index page. I love playing with index pages. I just, I don't know, there's something about them that's just so fabulous. There's so much information on them and we just blow by them as if they're not, nothing. But the way they're um, put into columns and things like that, I think just looks so pretty. They're great for background pages, um, for making bookmarks, all sorts of things. You could easily also um, put on the back of this some writing paper, maybe with lines or a blank piece, something like that, or a piece of art paper, something to give um, an extra space to create on. So there you go. These are easily come in and out of here. And uh, it's a fun way to present some tea bags. And if you like the uh, big chunky monkey sort of look, the overstuffed junk journal sort of look of a, a packed tea bag world, um, then you might not mind if it sticks out a little bit above and a little bit below. But let's say you're not of that cloth, then all you do is you make a shorter one. Maybe you cut this whole thing off here so you only have two, and then that would be easily disguised and hidden. Um, you could actually mount the entire back to a page, or you could just clip it in with a paper clip and uh, make it a removable. I made this one as a removable just for fun. Okay, so there we go. That's the first prototype. And then the second prototype is this little guy. And uh, there's some common themes running through here, uh, and I'll reveal those to you as we make them, but they're uh, quite easy to make. I just used a little paperclip tie with some embroidery thread and some lace as a closure. And this little guy has some uh, torn caramel colored music paper on the back. I love the contrast between the white and the caramel. And I just inked around and put a blessing stamp. And I also gilded it with a little bit of um, gilded, gold gilding paste. And um, this is a picture from washi tape uh, and an applique. And I added the flat back pearls and um, just grunged it up a little bit for fun. And uh, inside, when you open it up, there's a big long pocket across the bottom. And here is the tea bag, which can be easily removed. I've gone with coordinating um, washi tape throughout because, hey, I need to use up my washi tape. And this was a fun project to use it with. And I also put a little uh, page from a field guide in here about a flower and a type of flower. And it would be really fun if you could coordinate the flower and the tea. But if that doesn't happen, I'm sure it's OK. Uh, but that's kind of um, an earthy nature green sort of element in there. And you could also, um, you know, tuck in other flat things like maybe a, a sticker or something like that. Totally up to you, whatever. Creator's choice, right? Creator's choice. So let's go ahead and make some of these. They're super fun, super easy. You can crank a bunch of these out quickly. And you know in the crafter's calendar that July is Christmas, right? So that's right. We start making stuff now because my gosh, it, it, uh, we need to uh, make a few things so we're ready to go by the time Christmas rolls around. We don't want to be sweating, right? It's totally fine, fine to start later. You don't have to start now. But um, these can be used for birthdays or gifts or anything else that you like along the way. Okay. So what did I start with with this one? I started with a piece of junk mail. So let me see if I can find a comparable piece of junk mail. There's a little thinner. I don't I really, you just have to make sure that it's gonna be wide enough to accommodate your tea bags. So, and you don't have to use junk mail for this. You could totally use um, a copy paper folded in half. It should be thick enough. Basically an envelope is copy paper folded in half. So I just went with this because of the size. Um, this one's a little thinner, that's okay. Could make it to size. I just if I have one, I'll use one. 
Oh, maybe. I got something here. You get something. Oh, here's one from Canada. Oh, that's, that's a perfect size. Okay, so we'll make a brown one this time and go from there. Okay, so first thing I did was I sealed the seal. And this one was already torn open, but I'm going to cover most of this, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, so seal that up. And you can disguise that more with decoration if you want to do that. Um, but I am actually going, actually, it's not a big deal because we're going to cover the back anyway. So the front, um, I think, yeah, I'm just going to, I kind of, I kind of like the postage look of this. I don't know. There's something about it. Do I want to do it like this or like this? Or should I do this be the front? Maybe that'll be the front. This will be the back and I'll cover the back. Yeah, maybe I'm going to go for that. And we'll just see how that goes. Okay, so um what did i use to build my little uh shelves my little pockets here i actually used just a small envelope so what i did was i just um i would recommend probably sealing it if you could seal it seal it and then cut three of these off so i'm just i'm over here i'm right here i haven't left you i, I promise i'm right here just cut three maybe an inch tall uh, make it according to whatever you think might work in your your little world there Okay, so I have three. These are going to be my pockets. One, two, three. One obviously is together on the bottom and the other two are not. So um, if you have any of these loose little flappers, I would recommend just gluing them down because you don't want things getting stuck back there. Okay, a little more glue. Okay, and I got a little loose flap. That's okay. Just glue her down. All right, so you probably shouldn't, you should probably should glue after because I'm going to sew now just so I can show you exactly what I did. Um, horrible shadow there. Sorry, yes, I'm using the wrong bobbin and the uh, wrong thread, but here I go. I'm, my mission is to use that up. So what did I do? I did number three on my brother and I'm sewing. Okay, here we go. Ready, so I'm just closing the bottom of the pocket so that it doesn't uh, come apart. And in my uh, mastery of rookiness with sewing, I'm just gonna keep going, leave a little space and then just carry on so I don't have to stop and cut and all that kind of stuff. Close, keep it close to the bottom, maybe an eighth of an inch away. I'm using kind of a weird stitch, it's number three. It kind of looks like a, a bad stitch. And um, uh, even though this one is sealed, I want it to look the same. So I'm gonna go ahead with the thread and come along the bottom, here I come, and we're rocking and we're rolling and we're sewing and it's kind of fun it's gonna look all hodgepodge which is totally me and uh but if you want a perfect stitch then go for it okay and then i'm just going to cut these apart and we've got three little pockets ready ready to go ready to go okay oh so um i stenciled this one because it whoop, you can't see hey there you go i stenciled this one on the background because you so you um you can see it, uh, it was a white background, but this one has a lot of color and a lot of stuff going on. But I think what I might like to do is amp up the, the black part of it. So maybe to the edges a little bit more. Now, if I'm gonna find my very wonderful paddle brush, which is a very densely packed makeup brush, you can get these everywhere. I have them listed in my Amazon store, but you can find these at Target, Marsh, uh, Walmart, Marshalls, CVS, they makeup paddle brush. And, um, is great for stenciling. So let's get a stencil. Let's get a stencil. Okay, we're getting a stencil. Now this one's kind of mysterious. So maybe we'll use our, our old friend <clears throat> tree. Now you don't have to use a tree. It could be anything. It could be totally anything. Don't worry if you don't have tree. I, I, tree's a little pricey. Tree's probably the most expensive stencil I ever bought, but I used the tree so much that I that was my, my excuse to myself why I, it was okay to buy. Okay, now I'm going to use my B distress inks black soot yes here i go are we recording yes okay round 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 load her up sally and i'm just gonna kind of go to the outside okay so it's gonna contrast nicely with some white i'm um, not a very delicate stenciler there's probably more ways to do this than i'm doing it but this is this is how she she blows around here what can i tell you okay here we go Hey, they're my toys, right? You know, if I break them, I break them. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. You know, if it completely blows up or falls apart, well, it's on me, totally on me. I'd rather you see me do it and, and ruin it than you ruin your own stuff. So, ah, oh, that's so cool, isn't it? I just love that stamp or that stencil. Um, 
And you could come in with multiple colors and do multi layers and stuff like that. But, you know, we have to draw the line somewhere. Um, okay, so let us, you know what I actually like to do? Where is my, okay, I need my, I need this thing. This is my other alternative black thing. And I'm going to amp up the edges, increase the inkedness of it along the edges, just to give it more of a crisp sort of black grunge effect on the edges. And this is just a lot of play. This is playtime. It was very easy to make pockets for um, tea bags to sit in, but this is like, yeah, you just want a little idea doing something um, playful and um, maybe a different way to decorate it, something like that. Here's your game. Okay. Um, so now I've emphasized that. That's going to show up nice against a journal page. Um, all right. So next I have my little thing. So I'm going to ink these up and glue these on in place so they know where they're going to live. And I'm going to do a comparison so you can kind of see. No, I'm not going to measure it. I'm going to eyeball. I'm going to um, uh, take my um, little tea bags and I'm going to kind of have an idea of if I want to have three of them on here, where would they have to land in order to all be okay? Now they can actually overlap a little bit, but it won't look like they're overlapping because the pocket will look like it's not overlapping. So I think I used, I'll use brown here, see what that looks like. I'm going around with some dun, 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 walnut stain. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. And you, you can use shoe polish, makeup, whatever you have. Um, doesn't have to be brown. It could be any color. And just, just have fun. Have fun and uh, uh, ruffle, ruffle through some, rifle through some stuff. That was the word I've been looking for for 100 years. Rifle through stuff. Not ferret. Not ruffle. Not wrestle. Rifle. That's it. I finally figured it out. Yay, brain. This brain's still working. Okay. So now we're just going to glue on our little babies here. And I'm using dun, 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 Fabrifix. You could pretty much use it anything, but you want it to have somewhat of a strong hold because people, this is a pocket that may be pulled on a little bit. And uh, if you don't want it to um, pop off, I mean, most regular glue sticks are not strong enough to do this. Uh, white glue might work, but you might just wait a little while while it's drying. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Waiting is good. Yes, patience. Patience for all. <laughs> um, but if you just want to get down with it, I'm sure hot glue would work fast too. I think it's just, um, it's hot. You know what I mean? And, uh, okay. I see approximating the like, same place, eyeballing left, right, trying. My first one's a little bit cockeyed. We'll see if we can slowly correct that as it goes. Um, as the third one gets put on. And you can make these pretty and colorful. You can make them neon. You can make them pink and blue and purple, or you could go with the neutrals and just make your, um, have your tea bag be the, uh, the exciting moment on the page, which I think this one is going to lend itself towards. Now I went ahead and I put a little stamp, um, here. So let me just replicate that process. Okay. Now the worst stamper in the world will demonstrate how to stamp not on the right thing underneath me, I'm sure. Not in the middle, probably pressing too hard and rocking, probably not supposed to rock. I don't know, but uh, I stamped them. <laughs> okay, so take a quick peek, see what we have so far. All right, this is what we have so far. So as you see, it comes to together pretty quickly. And then what I'm going to do with this one is I, I um, oops, sorry, I did sew around the edges, so I'm going to show you that. This is not, um, actually, let me, let me put the back on first. That's what I did. I had the back and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with the back? Am I going to leave it and just glue the whole thing? Well, I thought this was going to be longer than my journal. So no, I want to, uh, put something on the back and, and I didn't use that whole page. Where'd it go? 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 Where are you? Nope. Nope, nowhere to be found. Nope, nowhere in the vicinity. Not showing his face. Okay, um, I'll get another paper. Hold on. Okay, so I just grabbed a, a piece of scrapbook paper, which, um, you know, I've got a ton of, and I really need to use it up. So let me turn it over. I think this is kind of a nice complimentary page. And then I'm just going to glue, lightly glue this down, maybe in the center, because I am going to sew it. If you're just going to glue it and cut it around, then make sure you glue right to the edges so everything is sealed nicely. But this was just a, a fast smattering of glue, not even a smoosh involved. 
Just laying that down. There we go. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take this through my sewing machine without cutting it first. I know that's crazy, right? Probably should cut it first, but this is how I did it. I want to show you exactly how I did it. Um, as close as possible anyway. Okay, here we go. We are sewing and now I switch to a number one, which is a regular old straight stitch. And I'm gonna make it a little longer, okay. Um, it's a longer stitch. I made it from that and I made it like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll see. You're supposed to hold on to that and start with the, oh yeah, look at I can hear my bobbin. You know, it, 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 if it could give me a look of disdain, that would be it right now. Yeah, that would be the bobbin look of disdain. How dare you stick this non-bobbin? No, it's actually not my bobbin that's giving me the look. Well, it could be. I was gonna say, it's probably my sewing machine going, that's not, that's not a brother bobbin. Who are, who are you kidding, Sally? I know, you can't fool me. I've been around for a hundred years sewing. Are you trying to convince me you're gonna use some other bobbin? But it's metal and it looks sturdy and, I don't know, it works like 50% of the time. But you're gonna break me if you don't use the right bobbin. No, I hear you, I, I, and that is true. So, um, you know, if, if you have a, a machine or a precious machine or you're, you're timid about breaking the machine, use the bobbin recommended by the machine's manufacturer, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but you know, when I get um, thread at the craft store, or not the craft store, the thrift store, it doesn't come with a how old is it? sticker on it so I don't know until I use it and I guess if it breaks a bunch of times that's a sign or it's not sewing well that's a sign right okay whoop no I can't see okay here we go so it is on there now so now I'm going to quickly realize I have a craft mat a glue mat under here remove that deftly <laughs> and uh get a I'm going to use my craft knife to turn it over so I get a nice flush edge I think I lost. I'm gonna lose a little of the stitching. That's okay. Cut this. Yeah, there went a little stitching. That's because I can't sew straight. That's all right. We glue that down if it comes apart. Uh, but I think this is so pretty. I mean, I don't know. I, I miss making stuff like this. I'm so glad somebody suggested this because it kind of knocked me back into the, oh yeah, let's make fun stuff for our journals motif, uh, motive, or direction, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so now, we have this. Oh, I'm gonna take it down. Okay, 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 okay. And now let's ink it up a little bit. Maybe we'll go with the black again. Do we have enough on there? Maybe we want to. All right, this one will work better. It's got more black on it. Yeah, I think so. More black sit, please. So any white that's showing from the back of the scrapbook paper, I'm just gonna cover uh, by inking it. That's probably the easy, easiest way if it didn't if it didn't cut exactly even, which never happens in my world, um, then this is the grand cover it up maneuver. One of the many, one of the many. We have many in the crafter world. And then I think I'm gonna come around and ink the back on this too, because I just think it will be more cohesive, a little bit of a cohesive inking design. Yeah, let me back you up a little so I'm not making you seasick. Um, okay, here we go. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a thundery, rainy, big, booming thunder, you know, summer thunderstorms in Florida. And Sonny, you know, he came in September, so he wasn't really familiar with that here yet. So it's a big day in his life to hear these big thunder boomers. So I'm trying to react, um, be like, it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal. He thinks it's a big deal, but I've heard that if you look like it's a big deal, then he gets even more scared. So I'm, 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 a, I'm attempting to look very calm and actually being excited about it when I hear a big boom and then we, we go play fetch and try and distract like, hey, that's a signal to go play fetch. And uh, I know the thunder blanket or sweater and all that stuff too, but we haven't, we haven't gone there yet, but it's very new to us. So let's, let's take it one step at a time. Okay. Um, so this is what we have so far. Isn't that, that's as cute as, cute as buttons. All right, let's see what we else we have here. We have a little bit of, um, I did a little extra decor on this one. Don't know if I'm gonna do that because this one lends itself to a different design. You know, it's more of a, this could almost be, um, more of a masculine design, I would say, or just a mysterious intrigue suspense for um, anybody, you know? I mean, I think this would be cool in a, Sher a Sherlock Holmes journal or something like that. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be so cool. Or a mystery journal or a Halloween journal. Um, you could even like do a flap and a really creaky 
that door and it could be some like fun scary things i don't know i'm in that mode okay so here we have this on the back we could put something here um like i did here or you could just uh leave it plain um but um let's see what we have let's see what we have here close by that's not too far it could be interesting well this is sort of interesting speaking of a creaky door that's kind of cool all right let's let's do that this is a page from a book it's going to tear it down now if you're using a metal ruler that has something on the back like a, a magnet or a cork if you want a sharp cut sharp ish cut turn it over if you want a more ragged rustic cut then um leave it with the uh the backing down it'll give you more of a, a jagged tore tear tore tear okay here we go it. i don't know just putting something interesting on the back because i i just find it's kind of fun uh, but this is optional. You don't have to put anything on the back. But I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, it's like, oh, what's that? What's going on? I don't know. There's something about fall. I'm seeing thistles. Remember thistles? Yeah. Pine cones, thistles. That says fall. Yeah, I'm in the fall mood. Ready for fall. Come on, fall. You're not black. Um, where are you? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready for the cool breezes. Somebody wished me uh, hello from the uh, foothills of the Ozark Mountains uh, and this morning. And I was like, oh, please send a whiff of uh, Ozark cool air over here. I would love that right now because uh, July in Florida is nothing. The word cool doesn't even enter into the conversation. No, we, we just snuggle up to an ice cube. That's as close as we get right now. And... Uh, yeah, we've got red tide, so we can't even go in the ocean right now. Um, so we're just, you know, making the best of it. So this is a grand crafting time, I must say. Yes, here we go. Oh, I love that. It just looks so cool, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I just, eh. Just pieces of life, you know, bringing it all together. Little bits of life. Look at Christmas. This is from an old Christmas book, I think, if I remember correctly, or um, a book on how to make Christmas fun things. Uh, food and and sw swags and and you know whatever these things are called um and some people are really good at making these things uh there we go all right so that's kind of cool so you can you can decorate them any way you like totally totally your choice um there we go so this one do we want a little something we might to just amp it up just a little bit okay so i'm going to look in my little number drawer and let's see what we have. I don't want to be able to do those. I like black. Does, do I have black? Oh, or I have those, but they're not black. But they're close to black. Okay, let me see. I'm digging this way. What do we have? Anything? Anything? All right. Okay. I think it's going to be too shiny. Let me see. You know, then, then maybe I'm just going to... Uh, Here's an old thought. I'm going to draw it in. Yeah. Let me just get a fat little marker. Um, what are you? Oh, I don't even know what that is. What is that? Okay. This is a, what is this? A Faber-Castell artist pen SC. So cute. SC. I have no idea what that means, but um, I think it's going to be perfect. I'm just going to put, um, because I did do some sewing. Um highly technical yeah there we go do you see that probably not okay all right i just put some x's i want to put some little x's here too just to kind of denote the edges of can you see a little bit to note the edges of the pockets. Maybe we want four rivets. We'll pretend these are little faux sewing rivets. Yes. There we go. We have our sewing rivets. Now this one I came along and put a thin piece of washi tape to denote the top of the pocket, but I'm not going to worry about that um, with this one because I think it's a different look. Yeah. So I think, whoop, back up. Okay. I feel like I need something. All right. Let me come in here and do something. Um, I'll just come in here with a little one of these with my SC. Okay. Little faux stitches. Faux stitch. You see, you can faux stitch, even mix it with real stitches. 
No rules. No rules. No rules. That's right. Do what you want. Do what you feel compelled to do. And just have fun. Yeah. Okay, there we go. A little more distinction. Um, and I'm happy with that. I'm actually okay. Whoop. All right. So we have that one. One and done. Okay, where are we? All right, we have... We are going to now move on to the next one. And this is the little booklet. Okay. Quick uh, look-see again. Little booklet. The back. Open it up. Big pocket. Pretty easy concept. And what did I use? What did I use, you ask? I used a regular envelope. Nothing fancy. I think a box of these came either at the thrift store or the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to seal it to give myself enough thickness. If you don't have this, yeah, you could just use regular copy paper um, or typing paper. Somebody said typing paper this morning. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, and now what I thought, I wanted to disguise this line because it's going to be on the inside. Um, you could put that line on the inside or the outside. It does not matter. But I, again, I'm attempting to use up my washi tape. So here's me using up my washi tape. And one day, one day, I will have made a dent in that pile. Okay, if you don't have washi tape, you could um, easily put a torn piece of paper, uh, something like that. That would look cool. All right, let's put you there. That was very good. Okay. Okay. Let's just get this off to the right size. Okay, there we go. Now we have been sealed. All right, and everybody is good and nobody's squeaking. Now, there's a couple ways to make the bottom pocket. My initial, initial idea was to pull off a big long piece of washi tape fold it back upon itself and use the thickness of the washi tape to be the um, the um, little shelf. But I decided um, against that because number one, washi has a bit of a waxy surface and it may not, it may pop off. That's what I'm saying. If I glue the back of the washi, like it'll be the front then on the back, it may be a little waxy and it might pop off. So I thought, so I thought, and amongst myself thoughts, um, maybe I'll take this, um, I'll just get a strip of paper and then I will take the washi and run it down the strip of paper and then use that. But this strip of paper isn't wide enough. We want one that's wide enough. Yes. That is the key to everything. Everything in life, the paper must be wide enough. Okay, what's this? Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll use that for the front and the back because that's a nice caramel color. All right. Um, and um, and um. Okay, what's this? Oh, we've got some piano paper. That might be cool. Well, let me see. Will it show? Yeah, I guess it will. I think white would be better. All right, hang on. Okay, I found the ins first inside page of an old book. That's this. Let me back up a little. And uh, that's going to be the perfect width. No problem. And now I'm just going to cut it to size there so I have to go about there now I, I want to make sure it's wide enough for my washi tape okay here's the big test okay it could be a little wider than the washi tape so I can't pick up anything anymore but I cut my fingernails and I like chase everything around the like trying to pick up a uh a nickel or a quarter or something? Forget it. It's game over. Okay, this is about yeah, the size, the width of this is exactly what I need. So I'm going to put that there. Line, a line. Oh, dismiss. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now with all these great machinations, everything should fit perfectly. All right, and let's cover it with a washi. Dun -da -dun. Dun -da -dun -da -dun. Here we go. Okay, there's a good central birdage. Okay. Now, this is a classic thing that happens in my world every day. A little tip. Um, if you get like glue and it's nasty and it's yucky, well, you could come and like peel that off and tear it off and, and that. But if you're just going to go with the grunge look, why fight it? You know what I mean? Just get in there and grunge it up. Where's the other thing? Seem to have more glue on it or black on it. So I'm going to look, make it look like it's part of the design because, uh, you know, I don't know when grunge became our friend. Thank you, grunge, because um, it just saves a world of problems. You know what I mean? And, you know, you do not have to ink anything, as we all know. Oh, I need to write that down as another rule. Write that down. Don't have to. No ink required. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to fix. But before we affix, we are going to fold to make our little booklet. So you just want to align your edges and fold. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Ready? 
fold. And if you have a bone folder, great. But if you can't spot yours, like I can't spot mine, it's okay. And uh, now I'm going to ink this up. And uh, what was that? now this one was a pink with some uh, gold gilt. I think I'm going to do blue this time, just so you have s we have some options and different colors we can play with. This is what is it? Broken china oxide. I just found that these oxides seem to, the, you know, it's really, it takes forever to use one up. Um, probably my most used one is the uh, pink one, the worn lipstick, pink oxide. Um, but, um, yeah, I know that's my experience. And mine, like I said, are old and, and probably, I bought, I probably bought them used, honestly, on eBay or something like that. So they were old and dry when I got them. But um, there's still a lot of life left in these guys, you know, they can just go and go and go. So, yeah, I mean, depending on where you are in life, if you, if you can, you don't even have to use this stuff. You could use, you know, other stuff. But if you, if you do have, you know, um, the option to find this stuff and get it, it's, it, it's going to last you a long time. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to be a, a, a purchase that uh, is not just going to disappear in front of your eyes, you know, and it's up to you to use it. <laughs> so she, she said with her giant uh, ink drawer of unused inks. Oh, goodness gracious. I can't even think about it right now. Okay, so what did I do next? Remove our little goodies. Uh, I did, oh, yeah, okay. I did some stamping. No, yeah, yeah, I did some stamping. So let's do that. Because I wanted it to look like it was coming out from the little pocket. Pfft, so, so uh, um, uh, artsy. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you could do any color, looking for the blue, just had it, cannot find it for like, does anybody see it? Do you see it? Where could it go? I haven't moved. I haven't walked away. It's probably, oh, there it is, way over there. Okay, I know it was out of the field of view for all of us. It's okay. So I just did kind of this deal, just to put those there. And you could even, this is just pretty the way it is. I mean, if you didn't, weren't even doing any more than this, a person could use this as a writing area. So this, you know, concept you could use many different ways. Super easy, super fun. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put you down there. I'm going to use the Fabrifix glue. There we go. Well, right side up. Make sure you know which way up is. That's really the only foible that could happen other than a paper cut. You know, that could always happen. And it has, it has happened, but that makes you remember that it's real and it's not a dream that you really are crafting. Yes, not just wishing you were crafting. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, so there we go. And now we have to train that little piece of washi. I'm just giving it a second to grab. Uh, and then fold where the other. So we're already playing well. Maybe I'm going to see if I can get a little blue on that. There, I think that looks pretty. And uh, what? let's see. Oh, we put stuff on the front. Let's see what we did in the front and the back. Front and the back. Okay, so let's say we want to... This time, we're not going to use music paper. We're going to use old caramelized book page, which is very fragile on its own. But um, for us, it just holds, you know, many, many possibilities. Okay, so if I, I'll try and demonstrate the difference of the tear. Okay, so this is the metal ruler side down if you've got a backing on your ruler. Okay, so that was a horrible demonstration because I have a... I have a rough edge, but um, if you want to really see a rough edge, now it'll probably be totally smooth. Okay. Okay. Now that, that kind of gives you a better idea. It gives you more of that. Oh, got it top. Yeah. Can you see it? That. Yeah. Which I think is kind of cool. So let's go with that. <laughs> let's fold this in half. Make sure we have enough because I think I can tear once. Yeah. And um, let's see how this goes. Let's just do it. Let's see. Oh, you can't see. Sorry. Okay. All right. Whoop. No. Tilt. Okay. There we go. All right. There we go. And, oh, sorry. I'm bouncing around here. Um, let's get a tear of this going. Now, like I said, it's a little more hunky chunky, so you might have to come in there and, and flibble it a little bit. Flibbling may be required. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's try there. So I'm just going for the, the text areas. Okay, so there's like a, a white spot. I'm just going for heavy. Do I have heavy text? Okay, so I don't have as much heavy text on that side. Well, what can I do? I can just I can just shrink this up to where it I like it. And then here, I could just make that one the same size. There we go. Okay, there we go. 
There we are. And now let's ink those with our black soot. Now this is just regular black soot. You know, I don't think I have a black oxide. Um, have, it, have you guys worked with the black oxide? Does it last forever? Because I do seem to be um, re-wetting re and reloading my um, black soot here, my regular distress ink quite a bit, but maybe life could be easier. I just got the, I'll, you know what? I'll have to do a deep ferret search, a rifle. I'll have to go through my uh, inks because it is possible it's in there somewhere and I've just completely forgotten about it. That's highly possible. Highly possible. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And now I'm doing this. Yeah. So are you making these with me? Are you, you got some tea bags? You want to pop into some fun little things? Wouldn't this be adorable? Like teacher's gifts or... Um, you know, a uh, pet sitter gift or, you know, thank you gift or uh, just something fun. You know what I mean? Just something fun, a little surprise. Um, I'm never against snacks and tea falls into a snack zone for me. So there you go. Um, all right. Now decide front and back. You will be front. You will be back. Make sure that you're, because because it's going to fold like this. So that's your, yeah, just make sure you know which is which and all will be well. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm just going around the mountain. Can you see? Yep. And very crunchy, very crinkly, very crackly paper, but because we're mounting it onto something, it's going to be perfectly fine. It's going to be like, oh, yes, I know I found my happy home. That's what it's like. Yep. You can hear it. You can hear it all the way from the uh, foothills of the Ozark. <laughs> okay, there we go. And, and... There, that came together quickly. What? That's a little, okay. okay. Oh yes, Holly, he has a lot to say today. Okay, so what did I had one of these? So this was just, these, these appliques came on a string. I think it's wedding something or other, but it, I probably got it from eBay or Etsy or AliExpress or something like that, but I just bought a bunch. Or if you don't have this, go check out some old clothes. You might have some that have this type of uh, applique stuff on them that you're not wearing or feel free to steal from your children's wardrobe. Hey, you bought the stuff. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I always ask permission, you know. I, but um, yeah, I mean, the stuff can uh, appear, you know, in your world before you know it. Okay, down you go. Okay. Maybe. Now, if you put a flat back pearl here, it's going to give you a little bit of an elevation. So just FYI. But if you don't want any elevation, you know, just do something else. But uh, pink might be pretty. Okay, let's go with pink. Um, you should probably put a little extra bit of glue under there just for security because the glue on this stuff is not that super strong. Um, okay. Now I did do some faux dots because I was just going to go with faux dots, but then I wanted to amp it up. I was playing. Yeah, yeah, I was playing this morning. I was like, I can do, I can do more. I can do more. I can do more. Okay. So just I'm put three because that's where I started. Can you see that? Yeah. And this is just a little pink. It's like a black, or no, it's like a black. It's like a pink Faber-Castell middle purple. Okay, middle purple pink S. There, if anybody's wondering, that's what it is. Um, so I'm just gonna decorate the front for little tiny flat back pearls in the corners. Yes, I would recommend using a, a better glue than what's on here because these will probably pop off but sometimes if they're fresh it's not so bad but I don't know how old these are you know you know it's been a while I don't know who who was I when I bought those I have no idea I was a pink pearly flatback girl apparently at the time but uh, I think uh, like uh, lace and grunge actually complementary complement each other very nicely um, it's kind of a like a leather lace sort of you know that contrast thing in life you know it's kind of cool <laughs> that's what I said just saying just saying huh that might be kind of cute maybe we'll do that instead yeah let me put some numbers down here and throw everybody yeah okay there we go yeah no bird here we've got numbers yeah all right um all of the birds kind of cute we could maybe put oh i should put some little lace under the two lights they're really stuck okay well we're not doing that now shoulda coulda woulda missus yep yep okay <laughs> all right so now let me get the uh the gold gilding where is it elves 
Gremlins, what have you done? Where have you taken? Thousand gold gilding. Can't find it. Okay, found it. All right, you put it back where it belongs. What a shocker. I know, huh? Now you could do all of this later or at the beginning. Like you could totally do your cover first um, and then the inside. Um, or not, it doesn't matter. It's such a little project. Just have fun. Just do whatever you feel like. Yeah, and, uh, and I like the kind of random, just little swatches of it here and there. You can go heavy, you can go light, doesn't matter. Uh, you can juxtapose little corners for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. A little corner juxt, corner juxt. Let's see if we can get a neon here. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'll just wipe it off. That's, that's kind of neat. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And now for the big uh, finale, we are going to load the puppy. Not you. You've been loaded already, my love. Um, okay, I'm tucking in my tea bag. And you want to make sure that your tea bag's going to fit your envelope before you go do all this. So just remember that. And then maybe you're going to put your little uh, field guide or whatever. Um, and maybe here I'm going to put a mushroom because, I don't know, we have a mushroom there. And there you go. So that folds up. And then if you want to make a little quickie um oh here i have a a sort of a bluish um paper clip uh that i i oh yeah let me use this one this one's kind of cute all right it's already blue yeah this one's oh yes 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 okay so now we have a little piece of lace okay well i'm just gonna i'm just gonna this is just a little paper clip but i the colors are perfect so we're gonna see if we can get this to work so there now if it's not long enough what do you do you can twist it you could tie a little string oh that would be cute i could do that i was gonna say you could staple it but then there's a staple there but i have a little piece of string let me see if i can do that this is totally ridiculousness but we will try piece of thread oh the minutia of this yeah look away if this is too much to, I feel like I'm making a fishing lure. Okay, here we go. Did I leave a tail long enough? Please. Okay, yes. All right, now somebody, I, this is where you need the third hand. Sunny? Sunny. No, nope, not helping. Pause won't work, mom. Okay, fine, fine. Just forget I ever asked. Okay, okay. Oh, all right. Oh, there, I got one. And now the other one should be much easier because it's, it's all horn swaggled together and yeah, there we go okay now little tiny pair of scissors reveal yourselves here we are okay there we go okay and there we go snip okay okay and you could do, look at oh i even got a little golding on the uh the thing i don't know don't well don't eat the packaging of your tea whatever you do but that looks kind of cool that just sort of happened by accident let's Let's roll with that because it's going to make it pop a little bit in here. I think that might be fun. Oh, yeah. Now it looks really, that's like super special Queen of England tea with the gold gilding. Right? Right? Okay. Okay. And let's put the big finale. The big finale. Okay. We're going to close her up. Monsieur. Do, do, do. And I present to you the Queen's Tea booklet. And here's the other queen's tea booklet. Where, where'd your little Bob paper clip go? We are, you are here somewhere. Oh, well, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun here. These are just some fun, simple and easy ways to start your uh, uh, maybe Christmas things or your um, shower or birthday gift or happy mail or just some fun ideas of things that you can tuck into um, people's journals. So let's see what we got here. There we go. That's kind of what we made today. Oh, my lamp's going to fall over. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hope you like that. If you find fun here, please like, subscribe, and share. And my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. I offer a free monthly emailed newsletter, which you re will receive a free digital image emailed to you monthly. Just um, the, all the signups and all my links are lo located down below in the description drop down box. I have a Facebook group. Come on over and join the Paper Outpost Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And we're also um, just seeing what you make from these videos. It's so much fun. And I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find fundals and digi kits and occasional journals for sale and uh, bundles of all sorts of crazy wild things. But I do pop things in there um, with video 
don't notice and social media knows, but sometimes just by surprise, and I don't tell anybody, I just slip it in, see what happens. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> I've got the, uh, isn't it time for lunch? Look from Papa, yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And, and you know when you have, when your fingers look like this. <laughs> Take care. Till next time. Bye-bye.